Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. In this video, we will see how we can what is what is a non-blocking and a blocking code, and how we can divide these routing files into a separate file, and how we can export from another file the code. Let's try to see in this video. So normally, if you try to see the Node.js, if you are reading from articles or anything outside in the internet, Node.js is a non-blocking code. So Node.js works in a single thread. If I try to open the paint here, so let's go into this new. Yeah. So when here will be a node server, okay, and here you will be getting an incoming request. So these are all the requests. So here some people will be opening the website and another people will be opening the website. So like this, the request will be coming. Normally, we already discussed in our previous session. Normally, in another pro in other programming language. For every request, a new process will be created. So uh, let's say that it's new process or a thread, whatever the name it may be. So new process will be created, and that process will be care, will be taken care to complete that request. Upon that complete request, um, completed request, so that process will take another request. So like that, you will be having a process per request, and this process is customizable so that you can have maximum concurrent connections like eight eight process. Like that, we can keep it. Those are all different. But whereas that comes into the Node.js, whereas it, it comes to the Node.js, Node.js we know that JavaScript is a single-threaded language, so that means it has only one process. So only this one process will handle all the requests. Okay, this this will handle all the requests. So now here you will be having the requests are coming, and in this one, so you will be having a single thread which takes the request here, and this request. So when it goes for a database to get a data or anything, so this thread will remain idle until the data is uh, came from the database. Up to then, this thread will be idle. So then it will take up the another request so that it will be processing. And this one is writing something to the file means again this thread will be idle. So by that time, if the database is finished, means it will execute the database. It will continue like this, like this. So this thread, single thread, will take up of all the requests. So now here. There will be no blockage of the thread. So here, here there is no blockage of the thread. So here the thread is not waiting for the data to come from the database. It is not waiting up to one. So when this one is sending, so it will be taking up of the another request. So to achieve this type of the, this type of request, so we will be having an event loop in the Node.js. As you already know about this event loop, the JavaScript. That also exists in the browser. Also, it takes care of these all event event listeners and all those things. It set timers. These all things it will be taken care by the event loop. So, which are in the stack. So, everything it will try to check. What are in the stack? Event loop will try to check those things and it will try to get this and execute it. In the same scenario, Node.js also has an event loop. So, by using this event event loop, the process by making of the single process, we can maximum utilize this process. Whereas in other programming languages. One request, one process is created. Now, if you want to get a data from the database, this process will sit idle until the data is coming back. So that means we are wait wasting the CPU. And again, another process. So this one also it waits. So here the process is waiting until the data is come back. Whereas here the data will not the data the process will not wait until the data come back. It will handle the other operations and all those things. So this one is taken care by the Node.js itself. It has an internally worker pool and all those things. So I don't want to discuss deep into this one. We'll go one by one. So this is how the Node.js actually, briefly, if I want to say, handles the request. So now, Node.js is a non-blocking code. So non-blocking code means the process will not block. So here, the non-blocking code means the process will not be blocked at any time. The code is not. The code should not be a blocked code. It should be a non-blocking code. For achieve this one, so we should write the code in an asynchronous way, not in a synchronous way. Already we have seen in our code. For writing the file, we have used that write file async. Uh, sorry, write file sync. We have used it. So this is synchronously. So that means the thread will wait until the file is successfully written in the disk. So this type of uh, synchronous behavior. So we need to avoid it. So in order to get the non-blocking code. So how we can achieve this non-blocking code? Let's try to see it. So here, if you try to go into this one, if you go here, here this is the not this one. Sorry, let's close these all things. And let's open this app. dot js. Yeah, here if you come down uh, somewhere at the bottom, where it will be here on right. Yeah, 
here we are having a write file sync so when the when the execution context comes here so it will execute these all the lines and here when it is writing the file so this file may take some time why because depending on the uh, dependency of the file size and all those things the file may take, take some time so now here the thread is waiting until and unless that file writing is completed so this should not happen like this so what we can do is we can write write file okay so this is an asynchronous behavior and the third it will have a third parameter which is a callback function upon completing of this file writing so this method will execute so then now the callback comes here it will execute this method if you want you can write this code inside this one or otherwise you can write outside this one also so this is the non blocking code right now so the code the thread will not block anywhere so here you will get this create server when this create server came so it will check the url it will execute it so like this it will go on so here request on 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 body on data on body on end so like this these are all asynchronous behavior so this is nothing but a node js event driven architecture so this code is written in event driven architecture event drives the architecture here event drives the code whenever an event is occurred the code will be executed whenever any until and unless end is reached then only this code will be executed so here if you try to see function submit username it will set the header it will initialize the body and this code will not be executed when the data is received only this code will executed and this code also will not be executed when the data is written when the data becomes sent then only this code will be executed that's it so these things will be kept in the event loop and in the memory location so whenever we get this trigger back trigger call back then only it will execute now the coding is finished so it will initialize these all things and it went to another request to it will go to another uh, it will pick up another request so like this the code will be so whenever the data is received means the thread comes here and it will execute the data and whenever any comes means it will execute the data and here also it will try to write the file and it which is taking means the thread will go away so this will be handed over to the worker pool and all those things so this worker pool also is a different concept which the node js has internally it will take care, it will take care of all the, all those things so now this is how the node js actually works in the deep now what i can do is so instead of having these all the files okay so we can also divide these files uh, we can also divide this code into a, into a different different files into a, so that we can have it very easily right so how we are importing this one we can also import the files in other places also so here we are importing the httpfs like that we can also import the local files also now we can create a router.js here router.js and here whatever the code we are having so let's say that these are all functions and all those things right let's try to remove this all the code and i can place it in this router.js okay this is the router.js and in the app.js what i can do is now here this is the router.js and at the top i can write something like constant routes so here it will get request and a response and in this one i can copy this app.js code whichever is having request.url and i can cop i can paste it here in this one that's it now i want to use this routes method in this server so here i can pass this routes i can pass this routes here so here what we need to do in this router.js file we have created a method somehow we need to use this method routes inside this one okay here we need to use it for this one what we need to do is first we need to make it exposure to the outside files how we can do it at the bottom you can write module dot exports is equal to routes that's it so now you are making this routes method whatever the routes method you are having you are making it available to the public so that whoever are importing that file they can use this one now we have removed this entire code right so there is no need for us for this file system why because this one is dependent on this one and i can place it here entirely that's it now we can also still further uh, do it let's try we'll try to do it afterwards now if i go here i need to call the routes let's import this router constant routes is equal to require of here router okay here the router means we should not give it like this it's a local file system available we need to give like this router that's it now whatever the name we are mentioning it here we need to use that name here and we are not use we are we are exporting the single default one 
so that is the reason we can use directly the name here for example if you want to give something like an object if you want to export multiple things means you can have here like this routes so you can export this single thing and also here you can get the text highly like and i can ask you can give it like this now these two are exported now in order to do the, in order to use this one routes here you need to use routes dot routes okay so here i have given the routes dot routes right and here i can do console dot log another one is routes routes dot text so here you'll be able to see text that's it now here further we can also drill down so by dividing these all things into a separate files we'll try to do it afterwards and now here we should not give routes dot routes and we should not call this method directly we should call the reference only so that whenever this server is created then only it will try to execute it now when this listen is happened it will have a callback if you want you can also do normally in our articles we will be doing all the time so server listening at 3000 port you can write it like this also now let's try to rerun it again whether it will work or not so here i have tried to use server listening at port 3000 and here i am able to get this high lila which is coming from the router.js so here i have exported this high lila and i am able to get this one now the server is also has created let's try to check whether the code which we are intended is working properly or not so this is here so here i can write lila web dev and if i try to and here i can also write channel something like this and if i click on the send so it is working perfectly without any problem and let's go into this one and we'll see here and here also we are able to get the data so it is able to write perfectly in the code so this is how we can divide the code into a separate files using like this router and all this instead. right now what the code we are writing is plainly on the pure node.js after using this express.js and all those things we can reduce more things like if conditions these all things middlewares we can decrease it more so this is how we can divide the files and also we can use this exports module so like this we can use if you don't want to use the module we can also use this this is a shortcut which exclusively works in the node.js only and you can also use module.exports.routes is equal to routes dot text is equal to high lila like that also you can use it this is all about the node.js non-blocking code how we can write the non-blocking code and also how we will be dividing the file structure so this is how we'll be doing if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you